This is a quick guide for the Night Spire achievement in World of Warcraft, which involves killing three further bosses in the new Nighthold raid. Please note that all the points in this guide are from a ranged DPS perspective. The first boss in the third tier of this raid is Croesus. He is a large demon at the end of a bridge called the Shattered Walkway. Mechanically, he's a very easy boss, however this will be the first DPS check for your raid. If you're heroic or mythic raid geared, you should find this pretty easy on normal. Foulbeam is the first move to pay attention to. This works just like the mini boss in Thorim's Corridor in Oljua, where you move left or right depending on which side he's going to fire down. Simply move to the opposite side of his raised hand to avoid damage. Slam is the next notable move Croesus will cast. Every 30 seconds he'll raise his fists up and smash them down, which will deal a large amount of damage to anyone directly in front of him. You'll need to make sure that at least one player, preferably a tank, is soaking the slam. Croesus will cast Burning Pitch periodically throughout the fight, which spawns green swirls on the ground. You will need to have players move into these in order to avoid ad spawning. Should you have any pop up, simply AoE them down as quickly as possible before turning back to the boss. Orb of Destruction is a debuff cast on one player that requires attention. The player afflicted will need to head to the back of the bridge as quickly as possible, as this will detonate after 5 seconds dealing raid wide damage. The further away you are from the orb detonating, the less damage you'll take. When Croesus begins casting Slam for the third time, your group will need to move back away from the edge of the bridge, as this will crumble into the sea. The area which breaks away should be fairly obvious after the second slam, as it will be chipped and cracked. The fight will continue on like this until you either get him down or reach the 6 minute enrage timer. Next up is Tychondrius, the leader of the Dreadlords. This boss will be the most difficult you've encountered in Nighthold so far, but geared raiders shouldn't have too many problems on normal. Like Croesus, this is another DPS check, however the fight is mechanically much more interesting. The first notable move cast by Tychondrius is Carrion Plague. This will hit two random players to begin with, dealing damage over time. We had our plagued players move out to the left hand side of the room by the red X marker, standing next to each other rather than in front or behind. This is due to the next move he'll cast. Seeker Swarm will unleash a wave of magic at the plagued raiders, and will deal 630,000 damage. The reason it's important to have players standing next to each other is for a number of reasons. Firstly, the more people standing bunched up, the more ticks of the damage they'll all receive, which could be catastrophic. Secondly, anyone between the boss and the plague players will gain the carry and plague debuff as well. Tainted Bloods are the first adds to emerge on this fight. You'll want one of your tanks to pick them up and drag them towards the back of the room to avoid them healing up. You'll want these dead quickly so uptime on the boss is maximised. Periodically throughout the fight, large spikes will burst through the ground and Tychondrius will begin casting Echoes of the Void. Move behind these columns to avoid the large amounts of damage and make sure there aren't too many people behind a single spike as they can be destroyed by the Echoes. After the second Echoes of the Void, Tychondrius will cast Illusionary Knight, which will phase all players. During this ability you'll want to kill as many phantasmal blood fangs as possible as they drop purple orbs when they die. These orbs will provide you with Essence of the Night buff which increases damage and healing by 30% for 30 seconds as well as 2% increased mana regeneration. It's important to make sure everyone in your team gets this buff. The next time Tainted Bloods spawn, two Falsworn spell guards will also appear. It's imperative to focus these down quickly as they'll attack players with Volatile Wound which will drop a nether zone once the debuff expires. After the second illusionary night phase, a new type of ad called Sightless Watcher will spawn. This will take priority over the other adds as they cast Burning Soul on healers every 6 seconds. This debuff will drain their mana, do ticking damage, and explode on nearby players upon expiring. Continue on with this strategy, making sure plagues are out of the raid and adds are dealt with quickly, and you'll get your kill. The final boss in this set, and the second to last boss of Nighthold, is Grand Magistrix Alessand. This is the most difficult boss of the three, though once you have the first phase down, you shouldn't find the other two too difficult. This fight is also reliant on good ad management. Two will spawn right off the bat, the blue recursive elemental, and the pink expedient elemental. You'll want to DPS the pink one down quickly, unlike what we did here, as this will pop a pink dome which greatly increases your haste. Follow this up by getting the blue one down to create a slow time blue bubble. Please also make sure that the recursive's blasts are interrupted at all times to avoid unnecessary damage. The first move you'll need to pay attention to is Spanning Singularity. This appears as a couple of swirling puddles similar to the one Alessand pops out of on pull. 
Just move away from these before the orb crashes into them to avoid damage. It's also worth noting that they leave puddles behind, which your tank or a DPS with damage reduction abilities should soak and remove. Arkinetic Ring is Alassane's second phase one move and is a very obvious ring of purple swirls. Simply stand behind the blue bubble as this will slow the swirls passing through it and move into the newly created gaps to avoid damage. Rinse and repeat these steps and bring your health down to 10% to activate phase two. In this phase, everything will remain the same, apart from one move being swapped out for two others. Arkinetic Ring is firstly replaced by Epicaric Orb in this phase, which spawns four orbs dotted around the room which need to be stood under before they hit the ground. The orbs will deal almost 1 million damage raid-wide each, so it's important to soak these and make things easier for your healers. The second new ability in this phase is Delphuric Beam. This will affect several players and will deal approximately 1 million damage to them as well as anyone between them and the boss. It's important that if you're afflicted with this, you should move away from others or move closer to the boss to limit its impact. Phase 3 again activates at 10% of Alassane's health and this should be the easiest phase of the lot. Epocaric Orb and Delphuric Beam are replaced by a couple of debuffs this time round. The first is Conflexive Burst, which will deal around 800,000 damage upon expiration. This debuff is affected by fast and slow time, so make sure to slow or speed this up as necessary to avoid too many going off at once. The second debuff is Permaliative Torment. This will deal increasing ticking damage to the few players affected with this, and they should pick up the slow time buff to avoid this ticking up too quickly. Healers should focus these players during the debuff also. If you found this video helpful, feel free to hit the like button, or subscribe if you'd like to keep up with loads more achievement guides coming soon. Thanks for watching.